Hi there, my name is Rose Hewson and I'll be talking about learning trends with the Moving Forward with Get Ideas event today, April the 24th, 2003. Um, I'll be talking about a MOOC or Massive Open Online Course called the Designing a New Learning Environment short DNLE by Dr. Paul Kim, the CTO and Assistant Dean at Stanford University School of Education. This course was run in the fall of 2012 and it was quite a massive success um, on several areas and I'll talk very briefly on them, mostly from the point of view of the students who uh, graduated from DNLE. Um, the observations and outcomes by the students are currently still ongoing. It's been four months now and the successes and stories that keep pouring back into the uh, Stanford teaching team is quite impressive and so we thought we'd share that a little bit. Uh, first of all, we did have students from all over the world, uh, pretty much almost every continent, and massive is definitely a key word here. The number of students were huge, um, almost uh, hitting 20,000 from 170 countries. Now, of course, the graduation rate and the slow or um, uh, decreasing numbers throughout the course, uh, that, that's pretty evident in any MOOC. Uh, however, we did find that the um, after the first week of uh, dropout, the numbers actually stabilized and the people who stayed on were pretty impressively um, active throughout and a, a large number, um, a relatively large number, are still currently pursuing some of the projects that they had started in the course. The second thing that we discovered is we had impressively a number of middle school and high school students um, and the projects that were run by these students were actually projects that, that wanted to design a new learning environment for their own learning environment in their own schools. Um, in fact, one school um, we'd like to highlight and, and congratulate is the Edina uh, High School District in Minnesota. They actually had not just the students involved, but the teachers and the administrators at district level. And we're currently right now pursuing um, following up with them and doing a longitudinal study to see how the impact of DNLE is um, going to uh, help and uh, improve what they're doing over there. Um, again, this is in line with uh, some of the ideas that DNLE talks about, which is where education um, spans more than just a K-12, and in fact even more than just a K-20. Um, the, the new title here would be PB-20, which is pre-birth or adult literacy. So we're talking about lifelong learning of people. In the MOOC we had, uh, DNLE, we actually had grandmas, grandpas, senior citizens who joined in uh, this MOOC and were quite engaged simply because they realized they wanted to be in with the learning environment um, of the future. The third thing that uh, we noticed uh, after the course is over, uh, a number of DNLE graduates uh, came forth to volunteer and become engaged with existing Stanford research. Uh, there are some projects here and uh, I won't go deep into them because uh, they're all online and you can take a look at it on the website. SMILE, uh, which is a Stanford mobile inquiry based learning environment. Um, Rose is a uh, remote uh, research uh, tool that they use for science and a thousand and one stories is, is a pretty impressive little um, uh, pedagogy uh, method where they get students from all communities to engage um, all ages actually children and adults to share the stories that they have from their communities and we now have um, DNLE graduates from the MOOC who are actively uh, running workshops for the Stanford research uh, efforts all over the world. Uh, we've, we've just completed some in India and Tibet and it's pretty amazing how, how you know people are just coming forward to volunteer to do these. Uh, the fourth thing that we notice is that some of the projects that were the MOOC uh, activity projects required in the course itself are now real life projects and are being carried through in the various countries where these DNLE graduates are living in. Um, one that we uh, felt was, you know, really amazing they're running is called School on Wheels. I think now they've, they've renamed it to School Bus and um, uh, I, I think again renamed to um, 
uh, I can't remember what it's called, uh, because they're they're getting it registered and running as um, independent nonprofit organizations. Uh, pretty impressive that you can take a classroom or an online class uh, exercise and and build it through and make it real and and getting sponsors to make it sustainable and actually benefiting people around the world. Uh, the fifth thing, uh, not only was this MOOC successful but this MOOC actually gave birth to other MOOCs. Uh, one of the projects in the course was called Peace Game and this group, uh, amazingly a uh, very gung-ho group of people, have gone ahead and they are now running a MOOC of their own called World Peace Game Online and it, it's, I think, currently in week three. It's pretty impressive. I, I do suggest take a look. It's, um, it's, it's pretty cool to see how, how students in the DNLE, I mean, these are all professionals in the field, uh, and they're running their own MOOCs now after uh, being inspired by DNLE. Lastly, um, the inspiration actually goes a lot further than just, you know, doing projects and running MOOCs. Um, there, there's a large body of research to be followed up with uh, from designing a learning environment. And uh, there's also a group of uh, students who, who are professionals in education themselves. Uh, at the moment, we've got some people in Germany and in Egypt and in uh, Africa and also here in the United States, myself including, who had participated in DNLE as students uh, and in our own personal uh, professional capacity. We're moving forward to doing research, studying what are the impacts of designing new learning environments using MOOCs to leverage this connectivist new world. Um, this this is a uh, workshop in conjunction with a conference coming up in August uh, and uh, we, we look forward to working with more educationists uh, around the world on this topic. So I'll, I'll end this short presentation with a quote by Paul, um, the instructor of the original DNLE last fall, um, and you know he, he's always telling me, just do it. Do it and fail. That's fine if you fail because you learn from your mistakes and, and just the main thing is just never quit. Um, and from the exercise of last year's DNLE and the current ongoing exercise of tracking the graduates of DNLE, um, he's now changed the acronyms um, um, that was originally used. Uh, DNLE, you know, rather than just a new learning environment, it's, it's actually more important that we think of it as a sustainable learning ecosystem. And so perhaps DSL might be a little bit more appropriate. Even the word MOOC, instead of massive open online course, what we've discovered is that it's more than just a course, because a course implies that it ends. Uh, but what we are looking for is something that does not end, something that is ongoing, and something that builds communities of learning. So MOOC, MOOC, is uh, to us no longer a massive open online course, but we consider it as massive open ongoing communities. And with that, I end this short presentation and thank you for listening.